good evening, afternoon, or morning, whichever one applies to you at this current point in time. Today I'm making this video because I am currently prepping some wood for a drill testing video. And so I was in the market for a sander. This is the DeWalt DCW210. Um, it is the 210Q1 is the name of the model that comes with a battery and a charger in case you are not currently in the DeWalt ecosystem. Uh, it's a good way to start. So it does come with the as a DCB115 charger. It comes with a 4 amp hour battery. Focus please. Focus please. Perhaps. Perhaps. Okay. And it also comes with the uh, sander itself with a dust bag so that you can attach it and not have all that crap flying around your shop or your house or wherever you're currently doing it. Also it has a pretty robust spring so if you happen to hit it, crush it, this thing's not going to just snap off. Okay, we're not using that. The reason we're making this video is because I wanted to attach this thing to a vacuum. But unfortunately, the vacuum that I have is not compatible with it because DeWalt decided for whatever reason to make a proprietary dust extraction uh, attachment or a port for their tool. So anytime you have a two and a half inch giant mega hose like that, there's, there's, there is no friction fit. Useless to me. Useful for anything else, but in this particular case, no. So, I'm looking, I'm combing through, and I find maybe one video where somebody talked about it maybe working, and I said, let me see, let me test to see if that's true. So, there is a auto detailing hose for rigid, or rigid vacuums, that happens to have a reverse threading inside. So, lefty loosey, righty tighty, does not apply here. You twist to the right in order to take it off. Now, in order for you to connect this uh, hose that is attached to your vacuum to your random orbital sander, by the way, these are Diablo discs. I'm using 60 grit. Um, in order for me to use that, I need the DWV9000, which is another proprietary attachment that you can thread into this. Why, DeWalt? Why couldn't you just make a friction fit, or why couldn't you just make both of them threaded? I, I don't know. The machine itself is high quality, and I will say it does a good job of sanding, but it's got like 10 different things that I need to add to it. Again, there, there are pros and cons to everything. DeWalt is not going to keep my money because I'm not paying $40 for an adapter to use the vacuum that cost me money and the tool that I just bought from you. So this is a $12 clone slash knockoff that I will leave in the description. It is from Amazon. When you compare this to the one that is the official from DeWalt, it's the same exact thing. There are three metal beads that are inside. See if I can get a, yes, maybe. Anyway, there are three metal beads all the way around that when twisted, they lock into the grooves that are on the uh, that center ring that has like a divot or an indent is where those beads sit. They lock it into place, they snap in, they snap out. Very nice. It's the same exact thing you would get from the DWV9000 that is the official DeWalt one. Don't let them keep your money. It's honestly, the only difference, you're gonna hear a little bit of a rattle because it's the beads. I assume the same thing is going to happen with the, the official DeWalt one. The only thing is, you're not going to be sitting here doing this all day, every day. And between the noise of the vacuum and the noise of the sander, you won't hear any rattle at all. Plus, this is only when it's disengaged. Once you actually engage the beads, it's virtually silent. So, this is fine. Just when you pick it up for that first initial noise, this is... I don't know if the mic is picking it up. Very minimal. So, this, $12. The other one, not so much. 
This set I will also leave in the description. Very affordable. It comes with the hose. It comes with several attachments for detailing your car. So the bonus is that besides using it with this uh, random orbital sander, you can also detail your car. I'm not going to show every side of the box just because there is a shipping label and people are weird on the internet. Please don't be weird. Just, you know, you can appreciate the person you're watching. Don't try to find where they live or do weird stuff. Come on. Just chill. If you don't like them, just keep scrolling. There's no need to cause weird things to happen. These are 60 grit Diablo discs. You get them in a 50 pack, 60 pack. I went with the 50 because, um, yeah, I got some other jobs that are going to require a little more, little more grit. I'm going to show you how this works, hook everything up, and we go from there. So this is just a few minutes of just understanding what you're doing and keeping you informed. If you happen to have this particular sander, do not be afraid because you can't hook it up to something. If you happen to have the rigid NXT vacuums or anything that uses the same mounting size, I will leave a link to mine. They do make bigger ones, they do make smaller ones, but they usually use the same uh, size vacuum hose. So this end will connect to your DeWalt adapter that will connect to this, and then the other end will connect directly to the vacuum. So stay right there. I'm gonna get this assembled and show you, and then we're gonna do some, some sanding. Stay right there. This is the NXT model number HD14000. You're gonna take your hose that you got from the detailing kit. You're gonna attach it directly in. If you have to remove it for whatever reason, all you have to do is uh, twist to the left or to the right while pressing on the three tabs here, and it will release the clip that is holding to the ridges that are aligned there. Ridges here keep this small locking tab from letting the hose go. Step two is to add your adapter to your hose. I got mine right over here and you're gonna reverse thread. That means righty tighty does not apply. You have to go left and eventually makes a nice snug fit and what I do is, I, when I'm finished with the vacuum, I just take it off and I leave the adapter on so I don't lose it, unless you have multiple sanders or you need this for something else. Just leave it connected. There's no need to take it back off. It serves you no purpose other than having to re-thread it every single time you use it. Nice and tight, ah, it's not going anywhere. So the key to attaching this adapter is to make sure that the adapter beads sit right in the groove. It is possible by accident to put this too far forward and end up being unable to lock out the beads. So make sure that it is in the unlocked position, which you will see by the lock and unlock. So once it snaps in, it will lock. And you can do that by making sure that one hand is on the collar one hand is on the body, it snaps, and that is not going to come off. Just look for the locking mechanism. One picture says locked, the other one says unlocked. Now once your adapter is in place and everything is secure, this thing is not going anywhere. I'm gonna pop in a battery. Let's go take a look at how the sanding is. So the first thing we're talking about is protecting your money makers. That's your hands. I use impact resistant gloves. Keep in mind, I say impact resistant, not proof. If you smash your hands, even wearing impact resistant gloves, that will not protect them. It will hurt. However, if you happen to accidentally, while you're drawing on a nail, clip one of your fingers, these raised rubbers on top of the fingers will absorb a lot of the... Uh, shock as well as on the backs of the hand. They are pretty good and as you can tell from how worn out they are I use them very constantly so I'm glad that the wear is on the gloves and not on my hands. I can't tell you how many times I've hit my knuckles, hit my hands, hit, uh, gotten them pinched with pliers. Protect your hands. It's painful and I promise you 
if you get hurt, it will be a lesson you'll never forget. So it doesn't have to be these. My hands are a little bit big, so these are XL, and they're a little, little snug, a little too close for comfort. If you can find bigger ones, if you have mega hands like myself, then go for those. They don't have to be impact resistant, but just keep in mind anything abrasive, you want to be able to um, hit your gloves without shredding them and keeping your hands and fingers safe. Number two, as far as protective equipment, is glasses. If you've got flying debris coming back, being able to put on a pair of safety glasses, I like these, they're by Milwaukee. Um, I have my hat on, but assume you're not wearing a hat or assume I, you put them on properly. The rubberized edges on these frames, they make them very comfy when they're sitting on top of your ear, so you don't have to worry about that fatigue or that wearing that happens on top of ears when you're wearing them for long periods of time. Um, if you're somebody who's working outside, you need them shaded, you could always pick up a pair that are um, completely shaded. These are too cool for school, but unfortunately the plastic on them, try to go for a more higher quality sun resistant uh, pair because um, you see a lot of the micro scratches when you put them on you can kind of see a lot of the marks where you are taking hits so they do their purpose because they are all scratched up instead of my eyes but uh yeah try to go for as thick a plastic as possible again you get what you pay for so the more you pay the higher quality the plastic will be these are probably my favorite i also have a shaded pair that are wider field of view so sometimes a piece of debris can hit you um, in the eye from the side they have a wider field of view for more protection so I will leave a link in the description for the Milwaukee ones because these are my favorite currently and a link to the wider field of view shaded ones so take that for what you will I like these third on the list is hearing protecting your ears is essential if you're gonna be around a lot of loud machines that are clicking and clacking and grinding and whizzing you are going to need protection for your ears. Whether you have over-the-ear headphones like these that are noise canceling, or maybe you just have a pair of earbuds like so, you wanna make sure that your ears are covered. If you happen to go to a gun range or any place that you would have foam ear tips, you can get them at any hardware store, but foam ear tips are super inexpensive. You can buy them in big packs. And if not, if you happen to have lawn care headphones or anything for chainsawing, lawn mowing, uh, leaf blowing, if you have those over the ear protections as well, those work too. Anything is better than nothing, so at the very least have something that has a direct line of contact with your ears so that that sound is at least being slightly hindered. And last, and possibly the most important in terms of this video being about sanding, is your lungs. Having a filtered mask, I know this is a little overkill for some people, and you might be thinking, holy crap, this thing is giant. It's, I mean, relative, I have a pretty big head, but this is a two filter mask, and you can buy the filters uh, as replacements, so it is also kind of eco-friendly, so you don't have to keep buying masks over and over and over and it works like so. Um, my mic is here, so you won't be able to really hear me once I put it on, but essentially it goes over the head. These two tabs here um, go behind the neck and they, su super simple, you put the loop over the tab and that sits behind your neck. Um, so like so, very simple. That's on this little collar part goes on the back of your head behind you and then you're going to uh, push see if I can show it this tab here with your pinkies or your middle fingers you're gonna tap that down and everything is completely adjustable to your size so once it's on you snap the locking down and it's a one-way valve so when you breathe in, you're going to feel the pressure because it's filtering air through here. And when you breathe out, the exhaust is going to shoot straight down, but not pull air back in. So let's see if I can grab this. So first head portion goes behind your head. Like so. This part goes over your mouth. 
and then this locks downward. And that's it. Because it wouldn't be a too technical video without actual metrics, I'm going to be playing the sander at its loudest setting, which is number seven. And you can judge for yourself whether or not this might sound like it's loud for you. Again, the decibels don't lie, so I will be leaving a link to the CDC's website for different noise exposures and what kind of uh, illnesses or conditions may arise from you being exposed to a certain decibel level for a certain period of time. Again, as a graduated medical assistant, besides all this tool stuff, it's also about keeping you safe. So, here we go. saw that at the loudest it was about 97 and that is definitely something you do not want to be long-term exposed to definitely grab yourself some earbuds over the ear headphones if you have foam tips maybe you go to a gun range or you have other uh, headphones that are specific to lawn care or anything like that use that protect your ears um, Keep in mind that you'll probably be using this with the vacuum, so it might be even louder. So protect your ears and the people around you or animals around you. So about 20 minutes later, my mic died, so let me make this very clear. Uh, if you do have any nails or screws, be sure you take them out because if not, um, you could end up damaging the sandpaper on your orbital sander. And more importantly, if you look close in there, uh, that black part that's showing is the pad that is under. If you damage those, then you have to go buy another one for your machine. Let's try to avoid those. If you have needle nose pliers like these, you can also use uh, locking jaw pliers such as these. Anything that will get them out. I came across several of these big screws. They are now happily out, as well as some staples. And if you look closely, um, 
there's a couple bugs that were in these woods. So, uh, yeah, be on the lookout for them too. Kiss them, don't squish them. That being said, thank you for sticking with it this long. And if you are in the woodworking slash building uh, journey, then props to you because this left a giant mess. I am by no means professional in this. This was just to make them look a little cleaner for the testing that I'm doing soon for some drills. And if you do this as a hobby, great. If you do this as a living, like making actual things with art, uh, using wood, damn. There's splinters everywhere. There's dust. I got some cleaning to do. And you have probably some work to do yourself. So good luck to you. Do not feel discouraged. Anybody can do uh, whatever they want to do, as long as it's a not a bad thing to do. Don't do bad things. Thank you. Have a good one.